Hello friends. If you're new to my channel, welcome. If you are a fan or a subscriber, welcome back. I really do appreciate you. Today's topic is going to be Jehovah's Witnesses, Nathan Knorr. This is the second part. I will be linking the first part. There will be an I in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Let's go. To get a running start, let's back up to the 1975 prophecy. In 1962 to 1966, Watchtower had grown very little. So, how did they resolve that problem? They announced the end of the world, of course. This is very dishonest, but Watchtower doesn't care. In the summer of 1966, Watchtower announced that the 6,000-year anniversary of Adam's creation would come in 1975, and with it, Armageddon and the end of the world. How they know this, I have no idea. This announcement led to much growth as expected. Watchtower had learned from its previous false prophecies, although they failed to grasp the greatest lesson of all. Stop trying to predict the end of the world. This announcement came nine years in advance to lead to as much growth as possible and to offset the number of people who inevitably would leave as a result of the failed prophecy. Yes, people, they knew it was going to fail when they issued it. It didn't seem to concern the leadership if new converts truly believed or whether they just joined to escape destruction. All they cared about was recruiting new members who were willing to buy and distribute literature. They even admitted that their goal was not developing Christian character. By using five indoctrination sessions per week, they caused a frenzy in their membership. Many sold their homes and businesses, as well as cashing in their retirement and neglecting their house, all because they believed Watchtower when it said the world would end in 1975. Nor didn't even pretend to be a Bible scholar, and most knew he wasn't even a good Bible student. Groose claims that two high-ranking officials told him that this was why Nor implemented the rule that no author's name would appear on literature immediately upon taking the office of presidency. Attorney for Watchtower Covington suggested they form local theological ministry schools as well as the Gilead School. He became tired of representing JWs as quote-unquote ordained ministers, even though the men knew very little to nothing about the Bible, nor took his advice. Both Nathan Knorr and Fred Franz continued the practice instituted by Joseph Rutherford, disfellowshipping anyone who resisted doctrinal changes or disagreed with them. Nor was known for his brutal efficiency with production being the goal at all costs. He felt that the members who sacrificed their lives working in the factory were nothing but common workers. He showed this disdain by not returning everyday pleasantries. Nor continued the tradition of being an autocrat that Rutherford started. Like Rutherford, he enjoyed sharing vulgar, embarrassing stories at mealtime and shared Rutherford's appetite for extravagance. During North's tenure, the governing body started gaining more and more power. 
To protect his power and prestige, Franz admitted to a Gilead graduating class on September 7, 1975, that the teaching that there was a governing body in the days of the apostles was false. Also, like Rutherford, Nathan Nor died without seeing one prophecy of watchtowers fulfilled. He died on June 8, 1977, being sick and disillusioned. Well, friends, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, press the subscribe button, and if you would like to know when I come out with new content, hit the bell next to the subscribe button. My Twitter, Discord, email, and PayPal links are in the description, along with the source that I used for this episode. If you wish to support this channel, you may do so on my PayPal link. Question everything and never be afraid. Here are a few videos from my library. If you have not watched them yet, go ahead and watch them and tell me what you think. Until next time, friends, goodbye.